he's still going to be the next president. So, <laughs> let's get into the latest news that are ongoing. Look at the polls, everybody. You just watched The Daily Show's audience boo Jordan Klepper for predicting that Biden will lose to Donald Trump in November. Now, I get that nobody wants to grapple with the prospect of a second Trump term and think about what that means for marginalized people and American democracy. But let's face the facts. If the election were held today, there is a solid chance that Biden would lose to Donald Trump. So Jordan Klepper is not wrong. And tuning out that reality isn't going to make it go away. But it seems like a lot of people would rather bury their heads in the sand and not think about that right now. And I think that that's fine if you're just a regular person and that's your way of dealing with traumatic political news. But that mentality right there becomes dangerous when influential people do it. So I don't necessarily have a problem with The Daily Show's audience members booing Jordan Klepper there. But if, say, somebody with influence reacts in that way, that's where things can go south pretty quickly, even more so than they already have. For example, Joe Scarborough reacted to swing state polling conducted by Siena College that was published by the New York Times. And this poll shows Biden losing in five of the six battleground states. And Joe Scarborough basically had a meltdown in response because, according to him, the New York Times has been releasing garbage polling with flawed methodology, and they are purposefully doing this, according to him, so they can generate clickbait articles about how Biden is losing. Let's watch. The right. New York Times right now is actively shaping the election cycles where this poll comes out on a Sunday yeah. and on Monday people go, oh, and I heard it. And I'm sitting there going, oh, don't be so stupid. That's why we're hey. doing this. So we're yes. not, no, so hold on theory? a second. What's hold your on, theory no, about no, why? No, 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 hold on. What I hear is after these Siena polls come out, every time New York yep. Times polls is, oh, well, everything that Joe Biden's done since the, since the, the uh, uh, State of the Union address, right. all of these, all this money that he's put out, all of the campaigning is for not. No, it's not. No, it's not. There's one poll that's wildly skewed every time. Okay. And it, does shape if, if it's a New York Times poll versus a, versus a morning consult poll and the New York Times then amplifies it 15, 16, 17 times, it, it, it warps reality and everybody responds to that in the media and in the political world. It completely changes the political battlefield out there for about a week, week and a half. It distorts the questions that are asked at the, of the White House. It distorts the questions that are asked of Donald Trump. It distorts all of the opinion. It distorts everything. And that keeps happening every month when this comes out. And then finally, about two weeks later, after the residue of the New York Times Siena poll leaves, people go, Oh, I think Joe Biden's on a winning streak. And then two weeks later, it comes out again, and it's garbage. It's an outlier. And yes, the New York Times, when they have all of these experts questioning the methodology, when they're calling like 20% of the, of the people, likely voters who have never voted before or didn't vote in the last two primaries, when they're, when they're, do, when they're even quoting people who said they're switching their vote from Joe Biden, who have never voted before? I'm sorry. The New York Times has to know what they're doing. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there, but to give you some additional context, they also quoted some pollsters on Twitter who discussed some flaws that they found in the methodology with the New York Times poll that they were all discussing. And they also looked at other polls like this one, which shows Biden ahead nationally by four points, although the margin of error is within six points, and they did mention that to their credit. Now, Joe Scarborough expressed frustration about the fact that the New York Times didn't write a single article about that poll, but they write articles about the polls that show Biden doing worse when they're both polls published by the New York Times. So it must be the case that they're trying to push the election in a certain way or create a sort of narrative, and they're not actually interested in learning the truth. Now, I think it's fine to question the methodology of individual polls, assuming you know what you're talking about. Most people don't. Joe Scarborough does not, by the way. But to answer his question as to why they would choose to talk about the swing state polls and not that poll that shows Biden doing favorably, nationally speaking, and it's because that poll doesn't matter. 
the presidential election, unfortunately, is not decided by the popular vote. It is decided by the Electoral College, which is why the media disproportionately focuses on swing state polling as opposed to national polls. But they do focus on national polls, too. It's not like they're disregarding it. But for him, he has an axe to grind with the New York Times because they publish all these polls and only focus on the ones where it shows Biden is doing bad. But they're focusing on the swing state polls because if Biden loses the swing states, he loses the election. Furthermore, polling isn't perfect, which is why it's important to look at aggregate polling data to gauge where the country is at. And based on polling averages right now, it's not looking too good for Biden. Even nationally speaking, Trump is ahead by more than a point, according to Real Clear Politics averages. Now, nationally, Biden is doing better because he's probably going to win the popular vote, but still not doing too great. When it comes to swing states, in Arizona, for example, Trump is ahead in polling averages by 5.2 points. In Nevada, Trump's ahead by an average of 6.2 points. When it comes to Wisconsin, Trump is ahead by an average of 0.6 points. In Michigan, Trump's ahead by 0.8. In Pennsylvania, Trump's ahead by two points. In North Carolina, Trump's ahead by 5.4 points. And in Georgia, Trump's ahead by 4.6 points on average. This is what aggregate polling data is telling us. So it's not just polling from the New York Times and Siena College that shows Biden isn't doing too well. Sure, you can question their methodology because they do skew more negatively for Biden, but that doesn't change the fact that all polling paints a pretty clear picture. This is a very close race. That's what the polling shows, and it's currently leading towards Donald Trump. Now, that can change, and Democrats have been overperforming polls since people are galvanized by the issue of abortion, but that's not a guarantee. And wishful thinking isn't going to change the current situation and the trajectory that we're currently on. But during his rant, Morning Joe admitted that it's preposterous to think that all of this money that Biden is spending on ads and campaigning isn't moving the needle, which is why he's choosing to just not believe the polls. But that's a very naive way to look at things. And it's problematic because Biden is reportedly obsessed with Morning Joe. And it's his favorite show, according to Axios. And as David Dole puts it, Joe Biden is watching his favorite show every morning thinking he's doing great and there's nothing to worry about. And that right there is incredibly dangerous because rather than reflecting on what he may or may not be doing wrong, his favorite pundit is reinforcing all of his bad ideas, his favorite pundit with cognitive dissonance, no less. And he's saying, look, you don't have to change a single thing. The polls are wrong, not you. Keep campaigning the way you are and you're going to win. Now, that hubris right there from Democratic Party elites is how Trump won the first time. And it'll be how he wins again if that doesn't change. Now, other Democratic elites like James Carville, for example, isn't necessarily raising doubts about polling per se, but he's also very perplexed by the fact that Trump is doing so well, according to polls, despite the insurrection and indictments. And here's what he had to say. In Trump's more ahead than he's ever been, more Fewer people think January 6th was of any kind of what it was is a, an assault on the temple of democracy, the Constitution. I don't know what the fuck you want to say. It's going the wrong way. It's not working. Everything that we're throwing is spaghetti at a wall and none of it is sticking, me included. And it's, it's hard when you start in your 80th year. And you, you, you know, like anybody else, I have an opinion of myself. And the opinion I've come to is, I don't matter. It doesn't matter. You can, you can prepare, you, you can be on TV, or you can write pieces, you can have a YouTube channel, you can have a podcast, and nothing, nothing. And, you know, we we got to, like, try to think of something different because what we're doing is really really not working so like joe scarborough he's confused because nothing he's saying or nothing biden is doing seems to be working now if you've been following james carville over the past couple of weeks he uh, recently released a video badgering young people for not supporting biden and said that if democracy dies it's on them and i agree that trump is an existential threat to american democracy the problem is that if we've learned anything over the course of the last decade or so it's that voter shaming and badgering voters doesn't actually work the onus is on the candidate, not voters themselves. But everybody is pretending as if this is so complicated and it's this puzzle that we have to figure out. But it's not rocket science. 
every single election is going to hinge on whether or not the Democratic Party is able to mobilize their own base. If they do not excite young people and people of color, then they need to register enough new voters to make up for that deficit. This is the determining factor in every single election. Federal, state, local, it doesn't matter. It's always about mobilizing their base. And if you look at the headline from the New York Times poll that Joe Scarborough was screeching about, well, it confirms that. Trump is leading because young and non-white voters are not satisfied with Biden. The question is, why? And do we even have to ask that question? Because I think it's obvious. He refuses to stop supporting Israel's genocide in Gaza. In fact, his administration is moving forward with another $1 billion in weapons to Israel, even though the State Department admitted that Israel is using their weapons in violation with international humanitarian law. So Biden is violating domestic and international law to supply weapons to a regime doing an ethnic cleansing and a genocide in Gaza. That right there is the problem. Young people and non-white people are abandoning him because they don't want to support that. They don't want Trump to win, but they feel as if their votes for Biden is their endorsement of his support for genocide. But don't take my word for it. Listen to Harry Enten, a CNN analyst who breaks it down very concisely. Let's look at the choice for president in 2024 among Biden's 2020 voters. All right, because I think this sort of illustrates sort of how Biden's getting pushed a little bit. So if you like Biden on the Israel Gaza war, look at that. He's getting 87 percent of the vote. Uh, RFK Jr. is getting eight. Donald Trump way down here at four. But if you dislike Biden, if you disapprove of the job he's doing on the Israel Gaza war, look at this. He's getting just 50 percent of that vote. My goodness gracious. These are people who voted for him last time. RFK Jr. is getting 20 percent. This is just a 30 point margin compared to a 79 point margin among those who approve of Biden on the Israel Gaza war. This is a huge dividing line within the Democratic Party. And that's something, of course, we're seeing right now between the progressive wing and those more centrist or mainstream Democrats. And I, as a confession, we're such nerds that occasionally Harry sends me some of this data and the number that jumped out here, RFK at 20 yes. percent among people, Democrats who voted for Biden in 2020 and dislike him on the Biden war. I think your next slide points to a little bit of what's going on here. What exactly is cooking? Why do they dislike Biden on Israel? Okay, America's support for Israel is, now this is among 2020 Biden voters who are currently not voting for him. So it's those dislike, those disapprovals. Take a look here. Do you believe that America's support for Israel is too much? The clear majority, 60% of those folks who are currently not voting for Biden, but did last time around say that America's support for Israel is too much. Just 24% say about right. You get this 4% who say not enough. But this group is double the size of the about right and not enough combined. And a lot of those folks at this particular point aren't necessarily going for Donald Trump. They're going for RFK. I gotta say that not enough is virtually nothing here. In, in general, what is Biden's support among those who were with him before? Yeah. This, I think, is the key point. Biden versus Trump 2024 poll margin. The reason Trump's ahead, he's holding on to more of his base right now. That 2020 voters leading by 81 points. Biden's just holding on, winning among that group by 73 points. That's the story of this election. It's why Trump is in much better position than he was four years ago. So, I mean, it's pretty clear that right there is why Biden is doing so poorly. He is losing his own base, whereas Trump has been able to hang on to more of his base, which isn't surprising. I mean, Republicans are going to support Trump no matter what. Whereas that's not the case with Joe Biden. Democrats have to hang on to their base if they want to win elections. When they lose their base, they lose elections. And I think that at this point, unfortunately, it's too late for Biden to get back the voters they lost because too many people have died, right? There's been too many women and children that have been indiscriminately slaughtered, and they're not going to forget that. So what Biden should be doing right now, if he wants to win, is even if it's futile, try to win back those voters he lost. But he also needs to mobilize non-voters and register enough new Democrats to account for the ones that he's losing. He's not doing that. Instead, he's trying to make up for the deficit by courting disillusioned Republicans, much like Hillary Clinton did back in 2016 when she lost progressives. But that strategy isn't paying off, and his attempt to run to the right on issues like immigration, for example, isn't persuading them to get on board, which is predictable because both data and studies show that center-left politicians adopting right-wing policies don't actually entice conservatives, and if anything, they alienate their own bases when they do shit like this. So the only option for Biden right now, the one path to victory is to stop supporting a genocide and try to win back some of the voters that he lost. Or 
he can keep doing what he's doing, keep supporting genocide, and sacrifice American democracy also an Israeli fascist can commit mass murder in Gaza. I think that's a pretty easy choice, if you ask me. But even though these pundits seem dense, make no mistake about it. At least the Biden administration knows what they need to do, and they've chosen to not do that. Biden is literally protested everywhere he goes, and the DNC is already preparing for disruptions from anti-genocide protesters at the DNC convention, which is why they're considering more pre-recorded speeches to avoid a repeat of the 1968 DNC convention, where thousands of anti-Vietnam War protesters protested inside and outside of the convention, and of course all hell broke loose once police arrived and were unleashed on the protesters. Things got violent, as they tend to when you unleash police officers on peaceful protesters. And by the way, Richard Nixon ended up winning that election, the Republican, for those too young to know, because as is always the case, when Democrats abandon their base, they lose. It was true in 1968, it was true in 2016, and it'll be true in 2024 if nothing changes. Now, I get that their heads are all up their own asses, but they know this. They're pretending like they don't know this. They know this. Biden knows this. The writing is on the wall and they see it, right? Even if they're pretending to not see it and they're feigning ignorance, they know. They know what they're doing. But Biden has chosen to risk it all and gamble with American democracy to keep supporting Netanyahu's genocide. This doesn't mean it's a foregone conclusion that he's going to lose because a lot can change between now and November. But pretending as if he's not in danger of losing is incredibly stupid in my opinion, especially if you're Joe Scarborough, because the reality is that he is in danger of losing. And it's not the polls. It's just a fact that Biden is a very weak candidate doing very bad things to alienate his base. And if he doesn't do a 180 immediately, he's going to lose this election. You can't blame young and non-white voters for that. And you certainly can't blame the fucking polls for that. You have to blame Biden because he knows what he needs to do, but won't do it. That's on him and nobody else. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man.